Okay, so we'll do the just do the introductions first. Thanks, uh, everybody, for uh, for joining us. This is going to be interesting. We've never done one of these before. I've never had so many people on. Um, everybody knows me. My name's Simon Birchall. We, we this is a, a workshop that we normally have at the Norton Grange on um, sort of a quarterly basis. It fell apart a bit last year because of COVID. Um, and we're going to sort of continue now using uh, using teams. I don't think we're even going to do a launch this year, a physical launch. I think we might even do that as a as a virtual event. But uh, anyway, um, just if people just introduce themselves. Start off with my guys, shall we? So who have we got from time where? Uh, I am Mike. I work in the projects team. Uh, I'm Nathan. I work in the support team. <laughs> I don't know if we do normally go around the table, but I don't know how to do this. So if uh, <laughs> uh, also time, we, so we've got from also time. Uh, just Dave from support today. OK, acting time. We've got Martin, I work in projects. Uh, no, Brian, I work in support. Um, Mark, um, on the support team. All right, uh, North East time recorders. I'm um, Mark, uh, General Manager. I'm Ryan, support. Okay, Busy Sure, West Africa. Lodson, Managing Director. Okay, Charles, Time of Data. Yeah, uh, Mike Wiseman, Service Manager, and our technical lead, Dan. Thanks, Mike. And who we got? St uh, Stanley, who's from Stanley? Great. Okay, I think is that everybody? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the um the the meeting today, a lot of you've already seen some of these some of these uh features, but um I, we wanted to go over a couple of them in a bit more detail. Um what um we do is just run this. I've set a deadline of twelve o'clock. I'm I'm hoping we can sort of wrap this up in about an hour. But if we start off uh, first of all, we, we've released we released 21.1.1 uh, about, about a month ago, Mike. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, I know there's been another release since then, 21.1.2. But if we start off, we just looked at what the, what the, the key features of 21.1.1 were. Um, and we've got two items. One's a dashboard designer and one's a dashboard and report viewer. Um, and uh, Mike, could I ask you to call up the dashboard designer first of all, please? Yeah. Has, um, has anybody installed um, 21.1.1? Ryan, have we? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, sure. Uh, Acting time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's our main version now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So on the on the the dashboard designer, um, we 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 we're not we we've installed this. We're installing it on the on the on the customers' uh, PCs, but we're, we're not we're not encouraging people to to start developing their own dashboards but i wanted just to show the people who might not have seen it what it looks like so this is the dashboard this is the dashboard designer um and uh, th this i think um it requires a certain level of tech, tech expertise on this uh, 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 mark have you have you had a look at this yet uh, me, and you've heard yeah, of Mark Woods, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I've installed this on our local machine, but I haven't had time to play with it much yet. No, no problem. Um, has um, has anybody anybody at all had a look at the dashboard design? Uh, the dashboard designer. No. Okay. No, no. All right. So the, the the idea now the idea is that we're we're going to be um, releasing a series of dashboards over the next few months, and um, uh, Ross at um, at uh, Celtic, what's the company called, Mike? Celtic Productions. Celtic Productions. Um, he's doing some of the dashboard development for us, following the the, the sort of the, the guidelines that Nathan's laid down. Um, so, I think if any of you, I think most companies here speak to speak to Ross on a regular basis. So if you have a chat with Ross, he'll he can get in, involved in the design. But when it comes to actually installing it, we're not going to be encouraging end users to develop their own design, uh, their own dashboards. Um, but uh, 
Mike, you just turn this one off the screen if you yep. like. We, we, we are installing it on the customer's computer, but we're not, uh, we're not, we're not sort of promoting that. It's raised too many questions. Um, the dashboard designer does have, um, the, there isn't, there aren't any books available for it. There's some help text, on, on, sorry, there's some YouTube videos that people can, can, uh, can, uh, can follow for that. But the, um, as far as the implementation goes, we don't think it's something that the customers should be getting involved with. So if we jump onto the dashboard and report, dashboard and report viewer. So this uh, this is the big thing. So basically, we talk about the implementation of this first. Um, Mike, if you want to call it up on yep. the screen. So um, it, the, 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 the idea is um, behind this application is that we can get time work onto more computers, uh, more PCs uh, on the customer's premises. And, and you know, my, my idea is the more people that are touched by time work, if you like, the more people that use some form of time work at the customer site, um, the, 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 uh, the harder it is for them to move on to other products, you know. Uh, so uh, we, we, we've been, we've been up, as we've been upgrading people to 21.1.1, we have a policy of upgrading all the clients at, um, at, at every site that we visit. Um, and so every one of those clients has got uh, time where has, has got the, the dashboard and report viewer on the, on there as well. We haven't tried installing it on, on computers yet that haven't got time where because we're going to do that in a second pass. We'll, we'll come back to that in a, a little while. Um, OK, so the, 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 the way that we've done it, we've done, we've done the implementation on the standard uh, SLA upgrade. When we, when we, when we upgrade the, the customer, we, um, we run what's called um, a feature awareness training at, at, the end of the, at the end of the upgrade. And we talk about any new features that have been built into the system. And we have been mentioning just briefly um, that this, uh, this app has been in introduced. But our intention is that somebody else is going to contact that customer to chat about the the, the features of this, uh, this this uh, the, you know the dashboards and the, and the reports that are available from within here. Um, it's not, but there isn't the time during the upgrade to actually carry out that work. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to set up a meeting where uh, the our customer liaison officer, so that's uh, Carl Carl Briggs, heads up that small team and uh, he, he speaks to the customers about every six weeks and what we're going to be doing is contacting people and just asking them uh, just mentioning um, about this this new feature that they've got it's completely free if they'd like to have a chat to somebody about this and then we organize a meeting it's one of the implementation guys that are going to speak to the customer and uh, when they talk to them they'll have this decent set of, uh, of dashboards and some some of these new reports um, and you know that that that's the way we're going to carry it out. The, and and the idea is that when we when we compile twenty one point one point three point four point five, a lot of these reports and the uh, the dashboards and reports will be included as standard. Um, but we do think that trying to um, roll roll out the new the new reports and uh, can't just be done during an upgrade. It's got to be a properly planned and sort of properly coordinated um, sort of attack, if you like. Um, Okay, so this the, what you see in front of you is the login for the um, for, for the. So what's different here? Um, well, it, uh, when, Mike, when you logged it, when you ran this at first, you want to just yeah, go back yeah. a step and just just show people what happened. So the first thing it does, it comes up, it starts off with NMD three because it's just attaching itself, it's finding the license, and obviously you've all got different licenses. So it will it will say NMD three at the start. Then it then it turns into the correct version. Um, so obviously this is a time where version. So what's what's new what's new about this, uh, Mike? We've got um. It's just visually a new look. It's got the same features as like forgotten password, but it visually looks different. Right. Okay. Uh, it's a bit more informative as well. Like for example, if I hover over the X, it says please enter password. So yeah. the the com the box is actually telling us what information needs presenting. So a lot of these features that you see within this application are uh, features that we've been talking about on the concepts and technologies during the roadmap uh, the, the, on, on the roadmap that we, we, we released over the past few months. So if you log in there, please, Mike. Just open the other screen. There you go. OK, all right. So if we, um, we start off, let's look at um, 
let's look at, at, at some of the before we get into dashboards yeah. and reports. Um, Mike, could you could you click on file for me, please? Yeah, and uh, let's have a look. We've got uh, we've got two main options in here: license and support. So the, what you see here, I've, I'll probably say this several times throughout this little session. This is going to be the new standard uh, for, for the time we're at. So what you see here is going to get reflected. You, it will be reflected in the main application when that's released in 2025. Um, so Mike, do you want to just talk us through what we've got here, please? Yeah. So what we've got is on. All the all the applications going forward, it is an easy way to see what the license information is. Uh, so it shows, for example, how many employees you can have, how many users, all the expiry dates, all the payroll dates, the expiry of the mobile workers, and all the additional licenses. And then the the other one, which is the quite nice one, is the Suprema feature. So we can see because obviously, as we can make a Suprema device, uh, Matt, you just could you use your move your cursor then to where you're actually yeah. talking, yeah. Yeah, so as this as the Suprema devices can be used as multiple things, so attendance or assembly points, yeah. uh, it's good to know on the license how it works. That's it. Okay. Right, let's move. What, what else have we got on here? Product expiry enabled, Sage Pirate. And so, okay, so we've got the, the expiry dates for the licenses. So if we look at support now, please. Um, and Nathan asked everybody maybe about eight months ago for so there's key information for this screen. So I'm not sure if everybody supplied that. I think acting time, you might need to supply the, this information again. Uh, Mike, again, talk us through these different options, please. Yep, so the, obviously she's designed for our application timeware. So when you click on these links, uh, it, it does different things. So obviously this, when I click it, goes through to our homepage. So the user can go through there. So it goes through to the community support screen, yeah? Yep. All the customers know the telephone number on how to reach support. So that one doesn't click through, but it's basically yep. telling everyone a telephone number. Remote support. So this is where our technicians now going forward, rather than having to tell them to go to our website, they can actually go through the application and request support. So they click the link, and then what ours does is it downloads the team viewer to their PC. So what would we do for the other guys, for the other customers, if they're not using team? So viewer? they would just provide a link of what they want us to connect to. So it could be any desk, it could be team viewer, it could be whatever you want. So everybody, like. if we just start for a second, Mike, if if um, if everybody has a look at what's set up on their um, on their support screens afterwards, um, the next compile is probably going to be in about two months' time. So if you can let us know, we've actually, we're, we, we're a little bit ahead with the, with with twenty one point one point two, um. So twenty one point one point three is the next time. So if you if you want to make any changes to this screen, you need to let us know, um, a ASAP if you can. Yep. I've gone to the next one. So this is another yep. one. So again, in this new file uh, support screen, uh, they can actually rec they can actually create a support fault through this screen as well. So again, this right. pops up and uh, our service right. desk. Okay, so the main point of this is it, it links to our fault logging system. Correct, yeah. 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 To your. So if anybody else has a fault log, if they don't have a fault logging system, an online fault logging system, what would happen to this option, Mike? Uh, I think it would just be greyed out, but then you could use this option. So okay. as it's called managed service, but all this does is when you click it, it can create an email to Outlook. Okay. It's going to crash my Outlook that, but yeah, oh. you, can, uh, you can create an email ticket. So it could be so if it's wise growth support at acting time. Don't yeah. put it, you care. So okay. Okay. All right, let's go back to the main screen. Just let me close that because it's good. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. Okay. Right. So on the main screen now, what else is new on here? Uh, top right corner, Mike. Yep. So what is this section called? Nathan calls it the account. So it's just right. basically the account okay. you signed into. Okay. okay. So what what the account does is it shows there is a way now for a user to see what permission policy and what to do list policy they're entitled to. What's the benefit of that? The benefit is he just the user knows. So rather than having to go get someone to check what their permission policy is, you can easily see it. And then from a support point of view, it's a lot easier because we, if for example, a user phones up with a fault, the support technician would know which policy they're on, so they can okay. easily can just go to the policies in advance to users. All right, what has changed password? It's pretty obvious, but. Uh... So we've added the ability to just change the password. So if you already logged into the application and you think, for example, someone knew your password, you can just change it straight away there. 
and change account password. And again, he, in the, the boxes, again, it's telling you basically what information is required. So what Nathan's tried to do is oh, where, where, space, where the space is limited, he's presenting a lot more information into the boxes. So like these red X's again, and the enter confirmation password in gray. So that's like a standard we've used throughout the whole application. Okay. Okay. And then we've got preferences. Okay. Now, have a look at this. Let's have a let's have a look. So the the save options. Um, what what does this um what does this relate to, please? It's just where it temporarily creates the file, so it'll you can change that location if required. Uh, don't think you probably need to do it that often. Okay, and then select the preferred document type. Yep. So what what this does is uh, when you're running a report. Rather than you having to just go into each report and say, I want to use a PDF, I want it to be a doc, doc I can set my preferred format as whatever I want, so mine's Excel. So if you, when we come to run a report later, if you just double click the report, in this instance, it would create it as in an Excel format. But if you, if you, you, it still gives you the option, doesn't it, to create the report in, in a PDF format? It's yeah, just, that's it's it. the default, yeah. isn't it? Correct, yeah. Okay, all right. And then on the viewer options, um, you no longer need to have um, Excel installed to be able to produce the, the Excel format reports. Is that right, Mike? Yep. So what the main, the main goal of this was to obviously the uh, dashboard and report viewer, we wanted to get it onto more PCs that don't have time work. Yeah. So one problem a customer may have is they don't want to pay for a, a Microsoft Office license or install a PDF viewer on a, another PC due yeah. to the cost. So what, what we've done is we've built in basically a built-in viewer and this enables us to be able to put this onto all these PCs and there's no extra expense to the customer. Good, okay. So what are the what are the viewer options we've got there? PDF, um, Excel. And no. Doc. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, and that's it. And it's a sermon all them formats. Brilliant. Okay. Okay, is that it on that screen? Uh, that's it. Yeah, it's the okay. same for obviously the exporting is the same. So you've got reporting and exporting. So when you bring the data out as well. So it's just so let's just touch on that for a second because at the moment uh, we have two separate modules in time where we have a re reporting and we have an export. And the reason we did that is because with Crystal with Crystal uh, in the latest version of Crystal, the exporting isn't isn't particularly good. So we yeah. we, we have we've got a. 200 and odd reports on 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 the on the in the reporting module and then we have we have um we have the exports don't we but that's that's going to be phased out shortly and we're going to just end up with this one module this one uh way of running reports which gives you a really good export uh, an, an export facility yeah that's it the other thing as well just while we've got sort of a few screens up and what happens as well is it, it creates tabs as well so basically if i'm running multiple reports or dashboards or even in preferences i can easily switch between the tabs so that's something that's a, a new feature okay so something else that's a new standard is the is is the themes the general look of the application so should we just have a quick look at that mike yep so you click up at the top and then the ribbon menu appears uh so if i can just if i just change the theme from the one i've got uh, so I'll put the one that I always get shouted out for. <laughs> Absolute mental. It's, it's, you know, it's like going back to DOS. It's like 1983. And plus, I'm entering dark mode phase of my life now, and I can barely see things as it is. It just makes it twice as hard. Uh, but yeah, you can easily change the theme. Uh, so you can, can change easily, it whatever you can want. easily change it back now. Yeah. I, I also picked this one and you didn't like this one either. <laughs> that looks like 1976 to me. That's 1976 all over again, just orange and brown. Can we go, can we go, that's it, can we get back to that feel? I feel comfortable again, I feel at one with the world. Right, good. So we've got themes, absolutely pointless in my opinion, but apparently we need it because people like to personalise it and whatever, but it's... Um, I guess people use this joke the side, aren't they? So, all right, what else we got there before we get into nitty gritty? Let's have a look. Uh, so, obviously, we close the plot down. So, we've done the file, we've done the feed, yeah. pretty much done it all there. All right, so we talk about dashboards next. We'll have a look at the dashboards. 
So just what what let me I want to say this again, right? The this particular application is designed to run outside of time work. All right. And um it, it's uh the idea, I'm going to touch on this a little bit later, but the idea is we're we're rushing to recreate the reports as quickly as we can because it's my intention that by 2022, so that's November this year, we're able to password out the reports section within Timeware, um, and we're gonna tell people that they should be using this. We're gonna make sure everything's available. That's what we're gonna do. It might not be what everybody would be able to, that's what we're gonna try and do. Moving forward, by the time we get to 2025, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but there will be, a re there will be a, this module will be inside the application as well, won't it? Correct, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this this is just, this is, the, the, what you see here will eventually be in the main application and this part will be on computers that haven't got time were installed on them, all right? Um, so then we, 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 we've, we've got the, the dashboard side. So what we've done on the dashboards, uh, the dashboards that you see here is a 20 odd report, 20 odd dashboards. There's 32. 32. 32. Yeah. What we've done here, <laughs> These dashboards are for creating standards for it. We've used these to help us define the standards that we're going to adhere to when we're creating the real dashboards. So all of you, <laughs> excuse me, have got these dashboards. We we won't be implementing any of these at any of our customers. We've used them to have meetings with, uh, with Ross to show customers what the dashboards are going to be like, but they're not, we're not actually going to implement these. We've got another heavy duty set that Dave's developing with some end users, which are going to be rolled out shortly. So the, the, uh, the something else that's, that, that's come out of this is that every dashboard is going to have what we call a companion report. And the idea is that the dashboards give you an at a glance information. So you can look at a, a dashboard and you know you can see straight away the key information. But if you want to delve in, into it any deeper, there'll be a report you can run that that that, um, that will give you more, more information. So for example, if you had a, a dashboard that was telling you the number of employees in the company, you know, split between male and female, obviously it's not going to show you the names on the dashboard, but there'll be a report where you could analyze that data. I've, I've, seen, I've come up with a simple uh, example there, but um, and, and, that, and that's the plan. So what you've got here is the, the, the dashboards were completed and we've got, Mike, have we just got one of the reports now from... Yeah, from, we've just got one that was in oh, there from Standard. Okay, so the other dashboards are going to be made, sorry, the other reports are going to be made available to you. You'll be able to download them from the site and drop them into your system. Um, and... I'll show you whereabouts we're going to post all this information later in the, the presentation. So, Mike, if you want to, let, should we, what, let's have a look here. So we've got the standard format. We've got the left-hand side are, are, the, are, the, are the dashboards that we've created. The right-hand side, um, we, we pulled the, 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 the dashboard across and we've got a template on the right and we can, uh, we can then edit the details on there. So do you want to grab one from the left and pull it to the right again? Well, yep. all the exists, so that just to show that, that what happens with duplicates. So I'm doing the attendance daily hours. Right, so if we drop that in. It all populate there. There we go. Can you see, uh, I'm pointing at the screen like you can all see me there, but we've got the <laughs> attendance daily hours brackets, one brackets. Okay, so um, that's what will happen if you pull multiple copies across, and then you would go in and make a change to the title. So should we, should we um, let's have a look at these options on the on the right, please, Mike. We'll just describe what they are, please. The icons. Yeah. So, okay. so this just is an update. Yeah, there's one, please. Okay. Uh, so what Nathan's done is based off where my cursor position is. There's two tips popping up. So we've what's got the reason for that? It's because he's removed the hidden right click from the system. Now, earlier earlier on, in the last couple of months, we've been telling everybody that we we don't support right clicks, and then we found that we do actually support them in some places. Um, so the idea is that generally we 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 don't have right clicks anymore to sort of reduce the number of support calls. Go on, carry on, Mike. Yeah. So what we've got is this just runs the dashboard. So if you just double clicked, it would run it. We've got is that, a dash is that the equivalent of the double click? Yes, that's equivalent as a double click. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, fine. Uh, dashboard properties. So that's if I, if we're going to the properties, it'll let me configure it. I've got favorites. So if I do that while I'm here, yeah, I just click that. So it puts a star over here as well. And it also, also puts it at the top. Yeah, so it puts it up to the ribbon menu at the top here as well. Okay, so we're on dashboard. So we don't have 
different formats at the moment, do we, for this? No. no. Okay, so should we have a look at the properties? Yep, and then we've got, uh, if we wanted to delete it from the left to the right, just one as well, we'll just roll it on this screen as well. So do you know, and the, the old, the, the time where six system at the minute, we've got uh, 208 reports. So when you turn a customer to find a report, it can be like, you've got to go into a, the certain folder structure. Nathan's built yeah. searches in yeah. all over, so you can easily tell them to just type it in and then it would highlight where, where it is. So it's just a lot easier for the customer to use and a lot easier to support. Can I just add, of those 208 reports, there are about four that are any good. <laughs> that, which is another thing we're looking at at the moment and addressing, um, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. All right, so we've got a, we've got a, a, a good search yep. facility there, yeah. So I'm going to go in property. So that search facility, again, has been used throughout. It's a standard that's going to be used that throughout all the applications. Okay. Uh, so I've just opened the dashboard properties. All right. Um, date range so first um first option there date range we've introduced uh some new ranges which are rolling ranges so rolling weeks months we have a rolling year rolling, well, yes, rolling yeah. Weeks, months, yeah um and the benefit of this is that as, as you can as you imagine when you run the report it's it's always running for a certain period not not the current or the previous period um, yeah where would you use that mike what's um uh, Nathan used a good example yesterday. So Nathan's got an absence uh, report, and he, he was using he was using a rolling years, and he, he could select, for example, multiple years, like three or four years, very easily. Yeah. And it was from the current back, date backwards, uh, which was it, it was impressive there. So the biggest one I can think of, Simon, is the Bradford factor. Right. A lot. Okay. A lot of people use that as a rolling period. Right. Thank you. Good. All right. So that's that's the date range. Let's. Um, have a quick look at the employee range. Yep. Okay, so this is this is considerably. Lordson, can you hear me? Do you want to just mute your microphone? I can hear. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Um, okay, let's have a look at this. So this this is now um, the. the this is a different way of looking at things. When, when we, when um, on the other system, on the, on the, on the, on the current time where six based system, um, when you were including people in, whether it was a dashboard or a report, I know we didn't really have particularly good dashboards on the old, on the old system, but when you, you, you weren't exactly sure of what you were including, if you said there was going to be um, a department range included, you, it, it didn't show you the people within that department, you just put the, you know, you select the department, whereas now what you, what you see on that screen is everybody that would be included, so we can, we, and we can filter it down at this point, so Mike, do you want to, should we, should we just filter it down to a couple of departments, please? Yep, so you just go to the column header uh, and then you can select the values. So if I just want to take off... Uh, fab so let's see what we got. Just show me that. What, on that screen, just stop a second. What have we got? So steel prep says 12. So does that mean there are 12 people from the steel prep department in this? Correct, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, right. so it's the number of employees in them departments. Okay. okay. Do you want to select a couple of so them? So if I do fabrication and engineering, yeah. so it's 12 plus 18 is 30. So, so as, as we as you made those selections, the, the screen yeah, been the changed. Filtered. Yep. Yep. And then you've got the count at the bottom that shows you exactly that there's 30 people in this list. Right. And that adds up correctly, does it? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wee, that's good. Okay. So let just show me the show me the what's included again, please. Who we got? Okay, so we're showing. Uh we've got fabrication engineering, but also so if yeah. I put the filter on it shows down in this bottom left corner right okay what filter i've got on so this this method of of filtering this is going to appear in other places in the application i guess but it, I, I, it's probably is it made, made on the personnel screen where you'd see this it'd be in the fine forms one as well the probably okay. yeah so right. it'd be in all of them really so the personnel find the absence what uh, we did on the, when we demonstrated this previously is then exclude certain information can we do that on this one can we uh yeah so you can do it two ways really so this is the bit yeah. that got a little bit confusing last time so you if you wanted to exclude a certain shift i could just not tick that shift so that shift is excluded yeah or i can do it another way which is i can do it through the, the like the what we call the advanced filter uh yeah. 
So I could do, for example, I want to exclude a shift. So I want to exclude okay. a certain. Do you want to just explain what you're doing rather than blitzing yeah. at 200 mile an hour? So what, yeah. what, what were you doing then? So what I was doing is I was just adding an extra uh, statement there saying yeah. I wanted to exclude a shift. Yeah. So in here, we've got a couple of options built in. So these are the fields that it, obviously that I've got control of. So you requested the uh, period schedule. So what I'm saying there is I I don't want to include it does not equal. Yeah. So, and then I'm going to choose a shift. So I'm taking off the four till six shift. Uh, yeah. Sorry, the six till six shift. Uh, select that, and then this number should drop because I'm finding the new filter. So we're down to 26 because I took four. Right. Off. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else on employee range while we're on this screen? Yeah. So we've added this bit, which is an improvement since last time. So what we there was a question uh, last time if if someone wanted to just select uh, a couple of people, like three or four people in the list, what's the quickest way to do it? And what we've decided is this clicking into this employee column okay. would be the easiest way. So say, for example, I wanted information on myself. Uh, so just Michael Coop, I could select that. And then if you wanted information on Simon, I could select that. And then if you want information on web, I could select that. And that's the easiest way to select individuals. Okay. Okay. And then one other one I found as well the, a couple of days ago is all these uh, filters that I've set up, you can, it stores them as well. So it's storing all the historical filters I've used. So for example, if someone's flicking between filters, they can easily, rather than having to do all the selection again, they can just yeah. click on it. Okay. So let, let's say, um, we'll look at, just go back to the employee range. If you just clear yeah. that part down. If um, I want to email a list of people that are in the engineering and fabrication, departments to somebody so you we could run a report or i think you can email it from here you can email okay, so let, let's do it okay so uh engineering and fabrication so i've applied them filters yeah so, so click on email and it's probably going to crash my yeah. yeah it's going to crash your pc why is that my outlook oh, that's right it's fine there we go so i can send that to so i send it to you yeah. And that's going to cross to you now. Okay. Let's see what I've got. It's on its way. Yeah. It's not arrived yet. That was something else that was that was coming in. All right, good. So, what else have we got at the top there? Just, just what we're looking at is this grid. I'm just thinking yeah. we move past the grid. So we've okay. got we've got a print preview, so it'll show the selection. Uh, I've not used that before, so let's see what it looks like. That looks diabolical, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's because he's bringing it out in. Uh... Let's try and make it look right. Go on. Uh... Mike's worried about me throwing him under the bus during this presentation for some reason. I don't know why, but these things we need to. That's the best view you get. <laughs> Is that it? At the minute, yeah. Oh, that was that wasn't worth my three and a half thousand quid. Was it? <laughs> right, okay, let's go back a step then. So we've got on on this grid, we've got a print preview, print export, and email. Yeah. Is that something new? Have we had? Did we have that on the Timeware Six platform? There was no way to show that range was this, but you'd run a report if you wanted to. Yeah, but what we're looking at here is easier way, easier, easier um, sort of ways for people to do things. So if somebody said to somebody, could you just get, could you email me a list of all the people in the engineering department, please, just quickly. You, somebody could go into could the that. range or the find or whatever, and they could do it from in win there without having to go looking for a report. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's idea. Yeah, and then you've got reset layout. We'll basically it'll drop everything back the filter goes off there and that's what it does you make a note of that print preview i'll we'll chat about that after yeah yeah can you do it before yeah i'm writing it down right so let's should we should just we again on here simon so just while yes. on the screen we've got, again yeah. got the search so it'll be very useful the search on this side uh because what say for example it's a 2000 employee system yeah. if you wanted to know if you've included a certain person in this report you can easily just type it in and it highlights any any cell 
any cell that's got basically uh, that word in that you're looking for, that keyword. Right. So it's, it's quite good. Good. Yeah. Right. Quick question. Can you um, hide certain columns? Uh, not at the minute, no. Of this, on the, on the, on the, on the range screen. Um, yeah. With that, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, not at the minute. Could, could I ask you a question? Why would you want to on the range, on the, on this range screen, just so, um, bad boy, if you make a note of this? Yeah. Uh, then I was just, because obviously looking at it, if you're saying there's about quite a few people, it could seem quite confusing. Um, like that some people might not necessarily want to see the vehicle registration and vehicle make, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll bring that one up. That's it. Thank you. Cheers. You can reorder it, Ryan, so you could reorder, obviously, if the customer's you can reorder the columns so you can actually reorder in the way you'd want it so you could put the vehicle stuff right to the end if you wanted okay cool you're uh, right Mike. could uh, you invite mock back in uh, you got kicked before yeah should be a request uh i'll have to kick him out and then we just time it's to okay it's, it's it's let me in now i'm back i, in now, I, so I invited right. him a second ago yeah uh, i got back in the lobby and I, I felt sorry for him so i let him back in I felt yeah. unloved. <laughs> okay, so Mike, on the the column headers, if you do a right click on the column headers, what options do we get there? What have we? So you can. It says you can hide it, but it doesn't work at the minute. They disabled these. All right. Okay. No problem. So if you get the bevel, if you make a note of that, and then we can build bring it up. Um, right. Should we move on to actually running one of the dashboards now? Yep. So, what do you want to run it? Just showing everyone for now. The I'll, let you people. I'll let you choose. You're the technical. Bevel's the technical. Let's go for it, shall we? Yep. Right. So, I'm running the attendance daily hours one. Okay. So, remember what we've done is we've created th these these dashboards have got uh, certain. Th these are for for standards. Oh, certain standards. So, should we have a look at the just one minute, I've put a crazy range on it. Uh, Doesn't matter too much. No, too much. I just want to look at the different. Uh, I'll just leave it as that. It's okay. Just okay. Okay, let's have a look at the range at the bottom. So you see the bottom yeah. part of the screen. You've got these two um, uh, two sliders you can grab and move. You see as you move them, the, the date changes on the top left of this one. And if you move the right hand one, might you move it. The idea is that this is a standard that we will use for selecting a range of date range of information on, on a dashboard. And when you release it, it then recalculates the top part of the dashboard. Um, yes, yeah, so just let me, I need to change the range. because I've Okay, come on, not a problem. There we go, that's the better one. All right, so what we've got on here, we've got the we've got the, the date range selection at the bottom. Then we've got move, moving up further. We've got the we've got the the green and red triangles, and we've got this gradient, the green gradient. So we've used the triangles to to very quickly display the fact that something hasn't met a certain target there. So in this particular example, the target's 40, 40 hours, and the, the chap's only done thirty nine point seven five. So it just alerts you to the fact there's a slight normally there and then if you look look down where you've got the green in this particular one somebody's worked um more than they should have done and that's been highlighted in green now it could be on a report you wanted it the other way around you might want to actually see that uh, any overtime is in red because that's not what you want um uh, it could be somebody's not achieved the hours then you want to see it in red so this it, we're trying to come up with standards that ross can adhere to when we're, we're designing these and and the colored gradient as well if it's a solid color so exactly the, far, the example of 40 hours is solid if you look down to the 31.75 it's starting to fade out because that that chap hasn't 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 reached his target and then we've got is that me at the bottom of use as an example there <laughs> Is that about, what's that? Have I done like too many hours? That's nice. I I think think it, it might be a bug. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way they're all saying that because you've just been paid for like 31 <laughs> days and been 30 days I've forgotten what you've said. So, um, nice one. Okay, so that's one standard. What else have we got? Uh, left hand side is, is obviously a line graph and a bar, bar graph. Yeah. Top. Okay, can. Um, 
we just look at what what else we've got. So remember, it's not the content we're looking at here; it's it's the it's 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 the it's, it's the standards. So we've got um, email. Oh, sorry. Sorry, right, let's, let's stay within the what options have we got at the top of the screen here for so, this particular. Yeah. Yeah, the ribbon menu changes depending on, so the ribbon menu at the top changes depending where you are in the system. So it's similar to like Excel. So if you're, for example, in a column, the, the ribbon menu changes. If you're in a, a cell, the ribbon menu changes and so on. Okay. Uh, so what we've got is a print preview again, so we can see how it would print. So that should be opened. Yep. Um, yep. We've got the export feature, so then again, I can export it into a PDF or I can do an Excel file, uh, so that can just run it for me if I wanted to pull yeah, it could out. You just, could you just send a PDF? Um, have you got um, have you got Mark's email address? Send it to Mark. Yeah, two secs. Uh, just need to put on my email there. Are you running this on two screens, Mark? Yeah, so everything's on the other side. I closed my emails as well, so I didn't look at them while we were in the meet. Uh, okay, no worries. I just wanted to. Just two seconds. I've just sent it to Mark now. I'm well, sending it now. Yeah, we're watching you. Uh, Mark at North East. We should just. Settled. I'll tell you what we'll do for next time, uh, Bevel. Make a note of this. All the all the attendees will get them in some some sort of collection. So when we do, when we when we show the examples, we could send that out to everybody, and they could you know receive it and be. Yeah, okay. so I've sent it. Yeah, that's going through there now. Like that. Okay, brilliant. All right, so we've got we've got an email. We've got an export. What does the export do on this? Link? So I exported it to my PC then. So it basically exports it out, and it'll just run it. Uh, so that's open there, and it's exported the information out. You've got your ranges, your filters. Very good. Okay. So this is I, no slow down. This is massively different to what we've done in the past. I know dashboards are dash. This is this is different. But what you so we we've got it's not just a visual thing. This the the behind the scenes we've got the formulas, haven't we, for this? They they've been. Is this right, Mike? And yep. So. The, so if somebody wanted, what, what, I, I imagine it, moving forward, we're going to have this great range of dashboards, really useful things, not just birthdays, uh, upcoming birthdays and crap like that. You know, some good costed versus actual, some sort of a Bradford factor type dashboards. And if you want to export that, it's actually, it's meaningful now. Whereas with the crystal side, it was just a bag of crap, wasn't it? It just didn't work properly. Whereas this is a, a, a big step forward. All right. Yeah. Okay, close that down for me. Let's have a look what's next. Uh, so we ju just on the, the one that we did then, we exported it out and then I emailed it in Outlook separately. So okay. we did, on this email one, it actually opens my email and puts you straight into uh, an email like that. Okay, good. Brilliant. Okay, okay let's have a look at some of the dashboards then. Shall I close this one then? Yeah. One. Uh, so we'll do the one that Nathan did. I can't remember which one it was now. Uh, I'll just open this absence occurrence one and see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got that. Second, yeah, what are, the, what are the stars? So the, you can set, for example, I think based based on the most common events, so this one's yep. an absence, it can yep. put like a highlight it as like a star or half a star or no star, and it just highlights to the user visually. What's the most common occurrence? That's yeah. it on this one. All right, it's okay. Anything else? Uh, we've got the grid view. It's collapsible, so you've got uh, you can actually interact with this one a little bit. Okay. So it breaks down. That's breaking down the adjusted days, the actual absence days, and the entitlement deduction. So it's it is like an interactive dashboard. That. Okay. Yeah. All right. Something I'm keen on, um, if you've got us to the main dashboard list, we're keen that, that moving forward, that what we have is a, a, a concise set of reports or dashboards that's not just littered with rubbish like we've had in the past. The, 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 the time we're six based um, re reports, there's 208, we just collected just dross over the years in there. And what we're going to do is just get, we want to get rid of everything and we want to start fresh um, and, and come up with some quality sort of. Um, quality reports and dashboards that are, that are useful, a good starting point for 
for other sort of designs and whatever. So, um, Mike, have you got any any other dashboards that are? Uh, just do a uh, ethnicity one. Just two seconds. Who is it? I've already got one over there. But there's an example of a chart. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a drawn up there. Brilliant. Okay, let's let's move let's move off of that and. Um, if um, if we move on to the report side now. Yep. So just close dashboards down. There we go. Okay, so this report that we've got is um, if we just run this, let's have a look. This is the this is the the first of the reports. This is what Nathan created that would that, uh, that includes the standards that, that Ross just is gonna let me put some data in it just two seconds. In fact, let, let's, Mike, it's okay. You, you get that, you get the range set up correctly. And yep. um, what, what I'd like to do now is uh, let's go back into now, get into the properties, please. Yeah, let's have a look at what we've got in here now. It's a little bit different, isn't it, to dashboards? Yeah, we have so, additional stuff. So we've got the ranges, which you know, the date ranges, which you've seen. If you drop that down, we've got the rolling options, just as we have on the dashboard side. Um, employee range, that's the same. No yep. there. Yep. Um, sort order. So the sort order and the appearance, can we have a, a, a talk about that now? What does that mean? So the sort order, this is when you run the report, it's, it's it'll do a sort order based off that. So in Excel, you can do that obviously through Excel, but with uh, with PDF, you can. So what this stop, does is- Stop a second, what, say that again. When okay. you put in a sort order in Excel, what did you say? So when you when you set the sort order through the application, through yeah. the uh, review uh, report viewer, when yeah. you bring the data out, uh, it will it will do that sort order on it automatically from what's set in this menu. Right, you mentioned sense? something about Excel a second ago. Yeah, in Excel you can do that by default in Excel, but on PDF you can't. That's so the key I was looking for. So. Are you saying then that, that uh, what you real is what you're really saying that if you ex if you if you run a report in Excel you can change the sort order? Yeah, you can do. Yeah. Right. Um, so what's this sort order we're looking at here? This allows you to. This allows you to do it before it gets out to Excel. So if if you wanted, this is it's a little confusing. It's in two places. You can do this sort order. You can do it in Excel, but you can also right. do it in the report viewer. Right. So okay. you've got a choice. So if you, for example, don't want to have to manipulate anything in Excel or change anything in Excel, you can use this sort order. Right, that's the bit I was after. What about PDF? And PDF, you've got no choice. In a PDF, when it's generated, you've got no choice of reordering the columns. So, so this if we were explaining system. this afresh to somebody who wasn't technical, would we say the sort order here applies mainly to the PDF when you're running it as a PDF and we Correct. wouldn't mention Excel? Correct, yeah. Okay, that might be a clearer way of describing it. So it allows you to manipulate the way in which the output is, uh, um, and the output's generated if it's for a PDF, because you can't change anything after you've run a PDF, can you? Yeah, that's it. All right, great. Okay, fine. So what have we got in there? What options? Uh, so we've got basically every every column. Right, so you say column. So what... It's important. I want to get everybody to understand this, Mike and Bevel. What 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 we've done here? This this drop down list. It does this. This does does this apply to every report we ever do, or is it particular to each report? So, for example, and um, when we design the report, do we have to make sure? Do, do we have to make sure that uh, that um, they're included in this list? Yes. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think Nathan decided on sort of a set standard for the reports, and then any extra gets tagged on the end. So like you've always got a call like a bunch of groupings such as company and departments and then any any report specific ones also get included. Okay. So when when a report's uh when a when a report's been designed, um if if, if it was say an we use for example an attendance report, an hours work report, if somebody wanted to change the sort order um before the before the they sort of save that away for themselves to use repeatedly you know like for a previous period or whatever they would yep. go into here and they might decide they want it in um uh, let's say department order and department that that company might be grouping number three might it yeah that's it yeah, yeah. 
So you could set it into a department order and then within a department, you could then change it. You could uh, sort it into surname employee, employee surname order. Is that correct? correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. OK, so if you forget Excel for a minute, forget the, 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 the reporting to Excel and you're just going to use PDFs. This is brilliant, isn't it? This is where you're going to change the, the order in which you're going to see the information. Is that yeah, I got it right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's correct. Yeah, good. All right, so that's the that's the sort order. And then if we have a look at appearance, and let's have an explanation about appearance. OK, so we've got what we're doing on all the all the reports is we're having basically, as Bev Nathan said before, all the companies, so all the relevant fields to all the reports, such as like groupings one to ten, uh, first and last name, payroll number will all be included as standard. What well, what we can do is we can select uh, we can select data. Just one minute, I can hear myself for some reason. Let me try. Let me just let me just. Can I just put this in a slightly different way, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. All right. On the appearance, um, the the appear these are columns. It says show columns. Yeah. 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 It says show columns. So that gives me, the, as a non-technical person, that gives me the the, the impression that I could actually remove a column. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't run this report yet. I know, but, no. but, but it gives an impression I could I could actually re remove a column. So let's imagine. That this report that we were going to that we're that we're looking at, so imagine a report was a personnel listing report, and it had um, it had payroll number. No, it had first name and last name. Keep it really simple, just first name and last name. Okay. So where are they on the on the list? There we go, first name and last name. All right. And let's say that's a listing report which is used, and the customer comes on and they say to you. Is there any chance I've got to produce a report for a manager, for a director, or whatever, and I need the payroll number on this particular report? I've got the report already, just need the payroll number adding at the moment on a time where six style report. That's very difficult to do, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But with, with this, somebody would just go in, they would make, like you, there's two ways you could do it, I like guess, many ways, but you take a, you make a copy of the report, the one that they run every week, and you just make a slight change. Wouldn't you? You make you, yeah, you, that's you, you and you simply just add in another column or you remove a column. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We really see that. So it's but, but what we wanted to do here was stop the customer um, having to. Well, first of all, crystal is diabolical. It doesn't work too well. But having having to call us, ask for a change, then the support guys having to put it to the development team for to get a cost. And the idea is that if my idea is a call is going to come in from a customer, you're moving forward a year, they've got these really good core set of reports. And somebody said, just want to add an extra field. I'd like to take some fields off. It's not a problem. Support, it can be handled at a support level, not a programming level. OK, yeah, good. The other thing as well is if we, we, we won't have to do as many big sport reports, like you said, so there'd be no like installing extra files onto all the PCs as well. So that's one benefit from a support point of view. All right, let's, should we run the report and have a look at it? Yeah. Should we just do the options while we're here? Yeah, why not? Okay, so what, what this allows us to do is uh, basically we, we're going to have like certain options that come along with the reports. So it'll be, for example, uh, yesterday we discussed like a, a colourful option, a black and white option, uh, like a larger font, a smaller font, and you'd be able to select the different options. So it gives the it gives the the user uh, more control over the appearance and how the report would come out. What would um, let's say we wanted to produce a report that had sort of totals and um, uh, let, let's say it included overtime. Um, would, yeah. the, would the would the appearance would is this where we control whether we'd see people that hadn't worked all the time correct yeah yeah how would that work what would the general idea be so there'd, there'd be an there'd be an option in this list where you could tick it and if you ticked it it would show people that have worked all the time or it would show and people how, and how would it know what all the time was that's what i'm trying to get be, so trying it, to up here if you don't yeah, know it, 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 it'd be based off the data in the system so we know what the period schedule is and we so know what design a report it's a, it's a bit we've got to be a bit clever now moving That's forward it, yeah. we have to imagine what the customer would want to do with this report so these 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 new standard reports that we're about to start work on 
we're, 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 we're having rather than ending up with let's say um, an, an hours work report rate one to five hours work report rate one to five with notes what we're trying to do is create one hours work report for example with with lots of different permutations in there and it's the appearance mike is that correct mike? That's it, yeah. where we can yeah. switch things on or switch them off yeah yeah all yeah. right okay good mike can i just ask a question about that yeah um in the show columns how do you determine which order the columns are actually displayed in do you is it the order that you tick them in the box or do you move them about once they've been selected at the moment we're not <laughs> good this bevel make a note of this second time we've been asked right you can't change the order of the of the columns yeah right at the moment but we just need one more person to ask us for that and i think we'll <laughs> do that so if there's any advance on that <laughs> anybody else anybody else need the columns moving Someone's there, something. <laughs> no, we've been asked. Can you move the columns, please? Yeah, who's that then? Martin Barrow, acting time. <laughs> kicking out. Um, no problem. I, we'll bring that up with Nathan. It has been asked. We've asked that a few times. Cheers, Martin. Um, right. Can we run this fantastic report? Are you ready yeah. to be stunned and amazed? <laughs> I'm being a bit sarcastic, one. Okay, no. All right. So, what did you do when you ran it? What did you What did you press there? Um, I just double left clicked. So, what they used to the way they run it in Excel. Yeah. Yep. Into Excel. All right. So this is a report. Again, just recap it's a report that's been uh, with this particular output is in into Excel format. What extra things can we do? Obviously, we all know we can manipulate that. But what let, can you sort this into data birth order? Yep. So oh. you just what what Nathan's what the standard is is it's going to come out with report filters. So there's going to be filters coming out. So it's a lot more intelligent the Excel reports we're doing now. So if I just do uh, date of birth order, oldest to newest, and that's then selecting the date uh, by date of birth, like so I haven't asked for. Why have you got me down at being sixty years? Who put this test here? You got me down at current age of sixty. <laughs> no, cool. All right. So, um, what what is what we've got behind the scenes here is what's the word for this sort of uh, Excel report, guys? What does Nathan call this? Um, the, the formulas are built into the report, aren't they? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, all the formulas are built into. So, in in the actual report, for example. <laughs> What, what what Nathan Price has done is he's built all the formulas into this into the worksheet that we're looking at. So what the customer can do is if there's data that's not, for example, in time where or they wanted to add extra data, they can easily just add it at the bottom and all the calculations that he's doing will will work. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is an output in, in Excel format. If we run this again in PDF, could you just come back out and run it as a PDF for me, please? Yeah. Don't know why it's come out like that. That's a funny colour, isn't it? Okay, so that that what you've got there, though it's a pretty you know, crappy basic sort of report, is that wouldn't be possible at the moment, would it? Into on the six platform, you you if you try to export that PDF report that we're looking at now, obviously you wouldn't you it, it wouldn't wouldn't work. work yeah. It wouldn't work at all. All right, okay. So I'll close that down for me. Um, if you take a um. Let's just have a look at other options that we've got on there, please. On personnel upcoming birthdays. So again, we've got the favourite feature. So that'll mm. pop up again to the, the reports tab. And that, okay. that takes the preferred format. That, where does it grab the, grab the preferred format from? From the config from the... Uh, Correct, yeah. From where, sorry? Uh, from the uh, file, uh, sorry, from the preferences. Just show me then. So that's set to Excel, is it, in preferences? Yeah. Good. Brilliant. So this is slightly different again. So uh, favourites are not uh, uh, at the moment. Favourites are stored in what format? At the minute, oh. everything's saved against the actual thing. It's one format. That's it. Right. Okay. All right. Um, you can do Simon as well. You can actually on the on the actual report, you can actually change. I think the individual report. 
Uh, yeah. But there's a bug with it at the minute, which Nathan's aware of. Okay, no problem. All right. So let me. Is that? Is there anything else on the on the dashboard and report viewer that that uh, that we can mention to 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 everybody, Mike or Bebo? No. We've covered it all. Uh, just let me have a quick thing. No. So what? Um, just rec a, 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 a recap on on what's happening now. Um, if um, Mike, if you let me just call up the screen here one second. Um, just going to get something. Sure, yeah. Just while you're calling that up, Sam, yeah, yeah. You know, yesterday Nathan uh, showed us an absence report and it had, I think it was, I think it was about 5,000 records of data, absence data. Yeah, can we show that? I, I can't show it, no, it's on his PC. Uh, he ran it on his PC and it took probably about a second for it to run. Uh, so the speed of bringing out the data from the system is like a million miles quicker than what it used to be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so the on on the on the yeah i'm just looking at we, we've got a, a list of reports that we're working on but i'll, I'll come to that a little bit later we've got a on the timely.info website and um, we've got a a, a a page which is uh, where we're going to we're going to keep let you keep a track of where we're up to with the developments so a couple of maybe two months ago the idea was that we were we every time we did an sla upgrade we ran a, a small extract file at the customer site and it would tell us what reports were in use uh, by by the different users it was anonymized data but it would tell us what reports were in use and the original idea was that we were going to rewrite each report and and then when we started looking at the reports because we haven't looked at them for quite a while and it, you, you know, there's just a mishmash of of, of of dross in there some really good ones and a lot of, of, of crappy ones so i thought maybe maybe rather than rewriting them what we're going to do is um is just not rewrite everything just the, the main reports and then we looked at those and thought you know what that maybe it's time for a complete fresh look at this and so um what what we're going to do is um we're, we're talking to some of, some of the, the, the not just the larger customers because they've got the they're they're they produce the data and they want the information uh, produced in a certain way it's some of the smaller guys as well and and we're going to we're going to rewrite the we're going to rewrite the uh, a, a set of, of reports which um, are going to be designed in such a way. So, for, for example, if you take the, I'll go back to that personnel one we talked about earlier. Could be there's just um, that maybe there's two personnel reports, list, personnel listing reports. One of them contains sensitive information such as uh, the address, uh, maybe the bank details, and what's the other one like? Maybe date of birth. Yeah. Yeah. And another one that doesn't yeah. contain that. And that's there included. And then when one of your customers says, I want one that includes, and they list three or four different things, you can just take the standard report and add them in yourself. So rather than clutter, cluttering up the, 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 main, the, the, the main version all the time, when you come to reinstall that somewhere else, I don't particularly want to have this massive range of reports anymore. I think we should, uh, you know, it should be quality rather than quantity. Um, and I think only occasionally will one of the reports make it into the standard report. If enough pressure was put on us and we've missed something off, obviously we'll listen to you. But my idea is that we have a, a good, maybe just 30 reports in total that are really good ones. As far as the dashboards are concerned, it's the same again. Um, and we we we, um, we we want to get a really good set of dashboards. The ones we've designed are not particularly exciting. They're not supposed to be, but the ones Dave's working on with some of the customers, I think will be, be quite interesting. So, um, that's has anybody got any questions on the on the dashboard da dashboard and report viewer anything no all right so i mean i've just got one question i don't know if it's possible but one thing we get asked for quite a lot is do you know when you've dragged a report to the right hand side yeah if it's possible to make that report available for somebody else but also i don't, I'd like to, i don't know if it's possible but when yeah. you've already dragged it and set all your properties can you then copy that report again to your right hand side instead of having to drag it across again and set all the properties again? I didn't know if that was something that could be done in that, there. That second point, Mike, is that what I've mentioned as a copy feature? Yeah, it's on the list there, yeah. Yeah, okay. What about the first one that Mike? That Mike the first one, what, what, he's, what, what, what Martin's asking is so, uh, 
myself and you have got time work the report view set up on a piece. Oh, is this so we can drop it in one place? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hang on a second, it's Mike. Matt's calling me. Yeah, he's calling me as well. Forgot what he's doing. Sorry, yes, yeah, so it'd be a way for like you, me to copy a report to you, Simon. That's it, there. So. Okay. All right. We write it down, Bevo, that one. So, yeah. okay. I'm done. Okay. All right. Um, so that is that's that on 21.1.1. So then um, the the idea was that at the start of February we, we released it. We were delayed in, in in releasing this. It was a bit harder than we thought it was going to be. Um, that's the bottom line, really. And and, and they and then moved on to the first station. And the first station um, was uh, 21.1.2. And the integration to the the first station has been um, a. a a very twisty and winding path and it started off we were going to have the um, the thermal camera and the mass detection and it's just not what we want to be involved with the the, the thermal camera is 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 it's not ip rated okay the, the actual device is ip rated the 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 fair station f2 so that's a, a quality piece of kit the, the 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 camera isn't so you you know whilst you can put the device outside you can't put it outside if it's got the the cap the, the the thermal camera on it and 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 to be honest I don't want to particularly get involved with those sort of problems we did some testing with the mask detection yeah Mike what did it do how many people do we have test te on our test system uh, myself and Nathan Price <laughs> two people right? <laughs> so this supports fifty thousand users and did it did it detect you properly. Not all the time. There was so one time. Well, not had... all the time. So it's not too bad. Yeah. We had to. There was a point when Nathan was trying to swipe in, and it took him probably about thirty seconds at the unit to try and swipe in. Okay. Uh, one of the problems that we, one of the, one of the problems we've sort of created for ourselves, I think, is that when um, when we when we were working with the uh, the fingerprint readers, the uh, the originally the Supreme fingerprint readers. It, it, we have to we, we set them to correct me if I'm wrong is it very high the sensitivity level is very high and the reason for that is that you can't you, if it's attendance you, if you're clocking in you can't have the wrong person can you, you can't have the wrong if it's access control I'm, I'm I'm adamant there are systems out there where the wrong people are getting through but because it's not it's not Fort Knox it's just the entrance to a building it's not that important people don't know but as soon as you get one missed clocking on a, on a biometric it's like it's, it's critically important so we set it to very high when we moved on to do the first station not the f2 but the original first station two a couple of years ago we had still had it set to very high and people couldn't clock in so we relaxed it slightly down to just high is that right mike yep that's yep. it okay so we've used that same um, that same sort of concept with the first station f2 we've got it set to to high and we, we need that accuracy um, for attendance and it, it just if you with the mass detection it just doesn't it doesn't seem that accurate so not saying they've got it wrong but I don't think it's right for us um, so if you've got the first station itself it works fine without the mass detection if you if you want to switch it on you can at the terminal level but we're just not supporting it on the software and you can do the same with the thermal camera uh, but we we're not uh, we're not going to be reporting any, not doing any sort of reporting on masks present or thermal, you know, uh, temperatures. So it's not what we want to be involved with. Um, it's interesting. We've got one of our larger customers implemented at the moment, and I'm recording this, so I don't want to say the name of them, but um, it will be interesting to see how many employees are on that site. At that site, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I think yes, I, th I think there was uh, four and a half thousand. I think. Right. So it's going to be, and that's not gone live yet. So that'll be an interesting. That'll be interesting to see if there's any if there's if there's any problems with that. Okay, so uh, the uh, first station F2 was introduced in uh, in in on the, on the it, was, it was pretty much at the start of February, um, and we've not got any installed yet. We've got a test site going into a company called UK Electronics, the people that used to make assemble the circuit boards for us. We've got three three test sites around the UK, and they're going to be testing the um, the first station. Uh, F2. Has anybody put one in yet? Has anybody? No. Okay. Um, all right. No problem. So that's the that's the first station uh, F2. And then really, what what's next? Um, and um, ne at the moment, uh, we um, Nathan is working on. Question, please. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, is the face is face station uh, face station two okay? Yes. Is it compatible? Is it okay? Right. The face. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry, Della. Uh, the, the 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 yeah. What I've actually missed one of my notes here. Template compatibility. First of all, any anybody who's got face station twos out there, the templates are not compatible with the face station F two. Yeah. If you've got a system, the, the, the templates aren't interchangeable. Um, Fair station is the, is the integration complete? Yes, it is. Uh, well, so it's it is complete. Um, and um, yeah, but but I, I can't tell you how successful it is because we haven't put one in anywhere. Um, we, you know, we said so we're, we're going to be putting one in shortly. What is it this month? Uh, so is it in March, Mike? Yeah, it's early on in March. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Is that all right? Yeah. Are you thinking of the Goldfields project? Yes. Yeah. You can you can be recommending that the software that you've got you have access to has compatibility with the Fair Station F two. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, good. Okay. So the next thing then is um, is the ESS Go. And if I just share this with you, so. Uh, this is what Nathan's working on at the moment. So the, the mobile worker is um, is is being phased out and he's being replaced by ESS Go. Over the next few years, ESS Go is going to have more features added to it so people can uh, make holiday requests, check flexi balances, etc. But for the minute, it's just going to be used for for, for, for clocking on and, and clocking off. So that that's uh, that's something. It's not been released yet. Um, the, the plan was March and April for a release in early May, um, and we're going to we're going to take down the no. I think mobile workers going to stay on both the stores for a while, but they we are not allowed to post upgrades to that because it uses old technology, which is not recommended. It's not secure enough, and that's one of the reasons why we're flipping to this new uh, new um, new platform. Incidentally, I, I haven't got a picture of that, but Nathan has. Um, it supports the native language of the phone as well. So um, be handy if, if the you know if we've got Polish, Latvian, uh, you know some of the overseas workers, um, the, it, sh it should appear in the correct format on their phone when it's loaded. That'll be an interesting one for the support team. But that's um, that that's the ESS goal. Um, and and um, if I could just call up the the roadmap just a second. Uh, in a second, so I'm just going to come off here and then share this next screen with you. Can everybody see that? Okay, so um, Toronto first reveal is complete. ESS Go, we're on that at the moment. First station, we did those in a, a, a different order. Um, and um, the just if we just touch on what's happening next we've got there's an api being developed it's a very slow process this the api is very very basic at the moment uh, but as we're ad, as we're developing the main application we're going to add more features into it so that at some point in the future and people want to integrate with time where we have an api at the moment we use other people's apis um, so that, that, that's that's sort of an ongoing ongoing uh, thing and then um i've got the the on 2022 Okay, jumping around the last part of the agenda here, that we're, we're rewriting the processes at the moment. So the event handler is going to disappear um, on 2022, um, and be, because of that, the event the, the event handler has the ability to run reports. So one of the earlier ideas was we're going to rewrite all those reports so the event handler so that doesn't cause a problem. For, you know. We decided you now we're not going to do that. We're going to rewrite. We're going to re, re, recreate the reports, not rewrite them, but provide alternatives for everybody. So the plan is still that on 2022, the event handler will disappear. It will will no longer it won't disappear. It will no longer support Crystal reports, and instead it will support the Dev Express documentation uh, documentation API. Um, and that means that we've got to get these reports or equivalent reports up and running by the end of the year. <laughs> but with the standards that Nathan's laid down, we don't think that's going to be a big problem. If, 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 if it is, we're just not going to upgrade our customers that have reports running from the event handler. We're just going to leave them on 2022, sorry, on 21 as we move forward, um, because it's important that we get we get this right. So what what's um, if I if I jump now to 
this page. So we're on timeware.info, if I just show you where it is. Uh, so it's this option, Project Toronto Dashboards and Reports. And you go into there. This is where the new dashboards are going to appear, not the ones that you've got with your system, but the, 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 the heavy duty ones that Dave's working on. And then this is the list of reports that that's um, that's going to be created. So and that was a mistake, but those two attendances there. But so absence, access, asset management, attendance. And if you look across, you've got the the, the, the various information about this. So if, if, if what's going to happen over the next uh, of the next few months, you're going to see the reports uh, are going to be created, marked off in green, and then we'll make them available. Mike, can we do this for download from the from the from the yeah, download yeah. side? Yeah. yeah. So maybe at the end of every month. Uh, now we've got this email in this. We're doing like a regular email to everybody. We'll just send an email out to the technical people and say, look, there's some new data and some new reports, dashboards, and whatever. Just download them. And what we're going to say is, if let's say for example, when we've done this absence listing report, this one. Um, what we'll do is we'll tell you what we think that is the equivalent of on the current system. So there's this 208 report list that we've got, and we're going to say, look, it addresses these reports, you know, the, these reports, and then, you know, that you, you can have a play around with it and decide um, whether whether or not you um, you like it, and whether you're going to implement it or not. Um, and that's that's that is that is that is that's pretty much it. Um, is there, Mike? Is, let me just come back to you now. Is there anything? Is there anything else that we wanted to mention to people on the what on the what's next section? I've got the roadmap. We've got ESS Go, plan phase out of crystal reports. We've talked about that. We've got a website now where people a, a, a page you can go to to check where we're up to. Yeah, uh, just expect. just the installing side of it. So if you're installing the, if you want to install like the whole. Time work client plus the uh, report and dashboard view and the design. You just install your normal installer. Uh, it's only separate when you need to install the dashboard and report viewer. So there's two links on the website for each of everyone's version. Is that clear? Yeah, okay. Um, and I think it's going to be probably about where are we up to now, probably um, maybe August, September time when we've got. A decent set. Well, there'll be some. There'll be some coming out sooner. But I, I, I think as we approach 22, that's when um, we, we, we're going to have this this brand new set of reports. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be ditching the old ones completely. And I want to password out on 2022. I want to password out the access to the report module and tell everybody they're going to use this new reports. Uh, sorry, dashboard and report viewer. Um, anything else I can mention to anybody? Any other questions? You got it, Nathan. Sorry, has Nathan got anything? No, nothing I can think. Of, nothing I can no. think of. Anybody got anything they want to mention? No. All right. Well, if there's no more questions. That's the end of it. Thanks everybody for for appearing. I hope it's been useful. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, any specific points, if you want to come through to support, um, we've got Michelle now working full time, and um, she, she her email address is partner at time at Accord UK. So if any of you've got any new com new New, new starters to the company, new staff who need training, you can put requests in there and we can organise that doing Teams meetings and whatever. Okay, so thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. And, yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you